We've had a federal cabinet shuffle uh, recently, and Canada now has a new minister for innovation, science, and industry. His name is Francois Philippe Champagne, and we're going to be talking to uh, Robert Aslane, who's the senior vice president for the Business Council of Canada, about a briefing memo he wrote for CD Howe Institute with four ideas or suggestions that the minister's department might want to look at. So, welcome to the uh, interview, Robert. Thank you. Good to be with you. No, look, let's start with the first one, a uh, reskilling work of uh, workforce for the digital economy. And I recently interviewed Lance Mortlock for Ernst & Young, who did a study mm -hmm. on the oil and gas, uh, digital transformation of the oil and gas workforce. And he estimates that in the not too distant future, 30% of the workforce is going to disappear. And we've seen that happen, with some similar kinds of impacts in other uh, industries. This is not some. This is something that Canada has to grapple with. I think. No, absolutely. Th those are structural changes. And by the way, they're not unique to this period in time. Uh, they've been accelerated by COVID, obviously, and the fact that we're moving faster to a digital economy. But in every big industrial revolution, when you think that, you know, we went from a more or less agriculture, uh, you know, economy to an industrial one, there was a huge transition there on the tasks that needed to be performed and the kind of work. So those happen when you shift, uh, you see these big shifts in how the economy uh, works and perform going forward. So uh, since we're uh, going faster to this digital economy, and by the way, this is not about just tech, this is like in every sector, as you just said, uh, you're gonna have to uh, employ more software engineer in oil and gas and in agri-food agri and every sector of the economy uh, across the board. Uh, so this is very uh, much a cross-sectoral phenomena. You're gonna need to rescale people. Um, uh, there's, there are two issues there. One is, uh, you know, people in mid-career uh, needing to be retrained uh, and then uh, making sure that we have enough uh, supply for the demand that is rising in many sectors. And the tech sector is obviously rising fast. So those jobs need to be filled. So you kind of have to meet supply and demand or where the jobs are being uh, created. And that uh, creation of new jobs is going very fast. Uh, you know, companies are growing uh, in certain sectors more than others. And so this is what uh, you need to, uh, you know, perform as a first kind of uh, imperative for the economy is that you, you need to make sure that you have a labor force that is agile, that is well-trained, that is skilled, so that we can grow the economy. Right. And so your second point is owning our ideas so we can compete. And I assume that this refers to things like intellectual property and copyrights and trademarks and so on. Yes. So it's a bit linked to what I just said in a sense that more of uh, the economic wealth we are creating and the jobs we are creating come from uh, intangibles uh, or our intellectual capital, our ideas. We're more and more in a knowledge economy. What that means is uh, you have to create more ideas. You have to leverage your ideas, but you also have to protect them. And the way to do that is really through intellectual property. Um, and so if we are to become, uh, let's say, a powerhouse on AI or on uh, data aggregation, we're going to have to create uh, our own patents and leverage them and protect them so that they stay in Canada and they're not taken by foreign firms. In other words, all the public R&D money that we put in, we want to make sure that it goes to economic growth and uh, growing global firms for Can for Canada, as opposed to just having early exits and people going uh, out of the country, sell their business, and having this these ideas, this intellectual property, move uh, outside of Canada. So I feel that we need to adopt a more uh, what I call uh, Germany Fraunhofer approach, which is mu a much more integrated. R&D commercialization approach in Canada. Now, your third point is very interesting, and I'd be curious to see uh, what you mean by a challenge-driven approach to creating new markets. 
The best example I can give on that is what we just went through. We had this big challenge, right, to uh, fight a pandemic. We're still fighting it indeed. But uh, there was a race to uh, come up with a vaccine. A lot of people will think this came exclusively from the private sector, but it's not the case. In fact, most of the um, uh, you know, companies, uh, I'll take the Moderna case, uh, this was seeded R&D money by U.S. Uh, public uh, you know, research-driven organization. And it's very much the challenge approach that I'm, I'm speaking about in this, uh, in this note. And so let's say we would we would transpose this to climate change, for example. Um, you know, how do we solve a, a societal problem that is significant? I think universally recognized as something important, and make it an economic opportunity. Create a market out of our ideas to create to, to you know to to fight this challenge or to solve this challenge is very much uh, what I'm proposing here. And this exists. NASA, DARPA, ARPA, E in the US are uh, research institutions that work with the private sector to build high risk, high reward uh, research projects that eventually end up in products uh, and technologies. And if you look, for example, at what DARPA has done over the, the, the last 50, 60 years, it's pretty mm -hmm. impressive. The internet, GPS, all those inventions that we rely on today uh, were uh, essentially product of a challenge approach taken by U.S. research institutions. So I think it's time for Canada to do the same. Now let's talk about accelerating the digital transformation because uh, this has, in the energy sector, really picked up in the last two or three years. In fact, I did my first uh, deep dive on it in January of 2018 and I remember that at that time, it was, you know, it was about oil, uh, techno new technologies, digital technologies in the oil and gas industry. And I had executives telling me that I was out to lunch and, and this was not going to happen. It would be happening many, many years in the future. And it was already underway at that time. And I think that we don't give enough uh, credence, and enough recognition to just how big the digital transformation of the economy is. Exactly. Uh, well said. Just think about this pandemic. Who in his uh, in the comfort of their homes haven't used online orders to buy what they need, the services, products. So imagine companies not taking that um, that step uh, and not uh, being digitized. How left out they will be going forward. So th this pandemic has just like you've been a huge bo booster for this acceleration of digitization. And Canada was already a laggard before, especially because half of our economy is SMEs and SMEs don't invest enough in this. And so they will, this will create a big problem if, if, if businesses, this is businesses' responsibilities, but I believe it can also be facilitated by, by good government, smart government intervention but at the end of the day, this is businesses' responsibilities to digitize themselves, making sure that they become more innovative, more productive. And this is an essential thing. This is not something that is a must have. This is, uh, we're living in an economy now that uh, will leave people out if uh, you're, you're not digitized enough as a company. So I, I'm hoping that we can accelerate that and the pandemic kind of offers us this opportunity. Robert, thank you very much for this. Really appreciate it. Thank you. It was my pleasure.